Hey, hey, welcome everybody to another live episode of Mornings with the Outlaw, our first this week. Thank you all so much for being patient with us as we had to take a day off on Tuesday, both of us handling some stuff for our respective houses. Uh, but much love to all of you for joining us here this morning. I am the Outlaw, John Roca, joined as always by the lovely Alex Shawshank. How are you, Alex? Hello, I am today known as Vapish. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty spiffy. As you can see, I'm not in my house. Uh, obviously, yeah. I'm at an Airbnb while we oh. have boxes and stuff moving around. Right. So it's uh, I'm in a, kind of a new setup right now. So. Well, I appreciate you take you making the effort to uh, be a part of this week. I know you've got a lot of stuff going on, moving around, and what Thank have you. you. So thanks for taking the time uh, to be a part of the show again this week. Really appreciate it on this lovely Thursday morning. So much going on in the world of entertainment. Thanks to all of you who are joining us live here. I only see uh, Deanna. Skiggs, MK Songbird, Ben Rayner. We got about 21 of y'all joining us live right now as we start off. So hopefully that number will increase as we keep going on during the show. Remember, Streamlabs and Super Chats are how we make things happen here on the Outlaw Nation channel and on the Outlaw Nation show and on the mornings with the Outlaw show. So, so much stuff we got going on relies on you and your support of what we're doing here today. So uh, let's get into it, Alex. Uh, the first thing that just dropped uh, as we were coming on the air here, the first or the latest new trailer for this season of The Crown, season four. This one was Gillian Anderson Heavy, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher Heavy. We did see some Diana stuff near the tail end of this trailer. Uh, I, I thought I absolutely loved this trailer. It's got me even more excited. I retweeted it immediately. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see Gillian Anderson keep expanding uh, people's appreciation for her talent and her abilities as an actress. Mm -hmm. X Files was great, but of course, Last King of Scotland and all these, uh, and the, uh, the, I think it's The Fall, uh, these other TV series that she's been a part of there in Britain. Uh, it's been incredible to watch her grow. And then her stepping into this iconic character as an American actress, oh. taking on, once again, another American like Meryl Streep did, an Iron Lady, stepping in and mm -hmm. taking over this very huge British icon. Uh, what is your overall feeling as you watch this trailer? I actually might watch The Crown again, <laughs> honestly. And I think that's like, I think that's like one of the real big takeaways from this. I was watching it and I was like, I haven't been excited for The Crown in I feel like ages, you yeah. know? And, you know, a lot of that is due to, you know, Gillian Anderson. Gillian Anderson is like low key, like one of my favorite actors. She's in yeah. so much, uh, so many TV series and movies. She has like random little cameos yeah. in movies. And I'm like, where'd you come from? How are you somehow in those two minutes? Like arguably possibly the best part of the movie like yeah. she's in um like random little cameos like uh, the spy who dumped me yeah. she, where she plays like the leader of like the fbi or something essentially <laughs> and it's like a whole thing it's really hilarious but she yeah. is so great every sing single thing she does and her taking on this role as margaret thatcher i am super excited about thing yeah. is what i am also a little, little surprised about is that her interpretation doesn't include like the super shrill high voice mm -hmm. that is very iconic to the uh, margaret uh, margaret that's not her name margaret thatcher you know, wow. character. So I'm very surprised they didn't kind of go that route as well. Maybe to yeah. differentiate from Meryl Streep. That's a great point. Maybe they did. Maybe they just didn't want to. They wanted to uh, play it a little more low key. Of course, you mm -hmm. want to kind of tailor your interpretation of whoever you're taking on. If it's a a person in history to the overall vibe of the show, and The Crown certainly as a show has been an understated, subtle show with a lot of drama yeah. happening within yes. the subtlety and in the silences and in the looks, because of course the royals can't flip out and do emotional gestures and what have you. But uh, seeing her interpretation of Thatcher, you're right, it's more playing down in the lower area of the throat, more of a composed strength uh, that she's going to convey, it seems like. And Margaret Thatcher is a very, very interesting character for her to take on. This is a, a woman who was a British stateswoman. She served as the prime minister of the UK from 1979 to 1990. She was the longest serving British Prime Minister of the 20th century and the first female and still only female British Prime Minister uh, in the history of the UK. It was it was a Soviet journalist who dubbed her as the Iron Lady because of her policies. And you do get a sample of her political um, uh, situation that she went through during her time 
as the British Prime Minister. The, 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 there's a scene there where uh, the Queen says, well, I don't know if it's a good thing to make enemies on the left, right, and the middle, uh, unless you like having enemies. And she says, I do. And so that lets you know that Thatcher was very determined to do what she w felt was right. It was a very new wave of conservatism that came over. She handed over uh, uh, private, she handed over uh, public utilities to private control. She uh, gave, you know, she essentially uh, mirrored what Re what Reagan did here, what Reagan did here in the 80s by, by signaling a boom for certain people who are making a certain amount of money. But of course, the poor areas got poor. Uh, she went toe to toe with the miners in a strike in the 80s as well. So there's a lot of history to play with here with Thatcher. And the way they make her a focus of this trailer makes me think they're going to dive deeper into the politics of stuff. You know, in previous seasons, Alex, we've seen the prime ministers come in and they just kind of, you know, bend the knee to the queen and then have conversations and they have their own stuff going on. This is a way more controversial prime minister, a more determined prime minister, a stronger prime minister. And this is going to, and she's a woman, so two women as well. It's going to be fascinating to see what they explore in their relationship in this season. Yeah, I, I do think there's a lot of I don't I don't know about sympathy, but mm. you know th there is a real sense of I imagine respect between these two. Yeah. You know, obviously they're not exactly in a situation that's very common. Yeah, <laughs> Being right. two women of huge with immense uh, you know power and you know influence over the British people, but also they're in both are roles that are heavily monitored by men around them, where yes. they're constantly criticized yeah. by the public, where they do have a lot of enemies and so having potentially to rely upon each other something i'm kind of curious to see them dive into also yeah. the you know the iron lady in particular she is a very divisive figure like you mm -hmm. said you know it was a she really came at a time where you know new conservatism was becoming increasingly popular mm -hmm. with not only the american public but a lot of uh, you know european countries mm -hmm. as well so, and today she's even considered a lover or hater kind of situation. Yeah. You can't argue she made Britain for the worse, but a lot of people say she made it incredibly for the better. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious to see how, as we get much more modernized, yeah. where a lot of more people were obviously around for, like obviously people weren't as, people are now aren't as around, uh, you know, from, you know, from the fifties and World War II, right. that kind of thing. So they weren't as involved in the stories they were, but I mean, not to the yeah. same extent, but now people have active memories of these prime ministers of these yeah. characters. Yeah. So I'm going to curious if this, if it's going to be making it, I'm curious going to see how the people are going to, the British people in particular are going to mm -hmm. react to these characters and these stories and they're, yeah perceptions of these it's a characters. great point yeah how are the british you know because already the crown is according to a number of papers the crown is not something that uh the royals are particularly happy with and then other people who are like really traditionalists about the royals also say that it's not like um, how it happened fully and but this is tv so you're going to do you got to take some um liberties with certain characters and in certain situations um, and so we'll see some of that, certainly, in how Thatcher goes about these things. I like that we saw the protests and the riots. You know, being a fan of Liverpool, you can't help but uh, know about how she almost eradicated that city off the planet with her policies and almost drove that city into full bankruptcy and ruin. And there were a number mm -hmm. of cities that had to suffer because of her policies uh, and how that hurt so many people because they were trying to move off the old way of doing things, but in moving off the old way of doing things, they didn't provide new jobs in new fields, in new arenas, in new utilities to kind of help these uh, these uh, smaller cities, these port cities to survive. So there was a lot of anger going on uh, from th those areas and those cities to towards Thatcher. So I like that we're seeing protests and strikes and maybe some of that will get explored as well. And she was she also had an attempt on her life uh, by the yeah. R IRA, I believe, at a bombing in a hotel, she had an attempt on her life as well. So something she also uh, survived and got through as well. But also, we're going to get into more of uh, Lady Diana. We're going to get into Princess Diana. Emma Corrin is playing her, a very new actress. Emma Corrin is kind of stepping into the role to play Diana. We see her like kind of struggling with fitting into this family. I hope they don't go the route that she's this little wallflower that's this little daisy and it can't be done. She was also, she had her own steel herself. So I, I think we're going to see from what I see in the trailer, like they're going to try to kind of mold her and twist her and push her and fit her into what they want her to be. But she's going to rebel and she's going to fight back. And of course, we know she becomes a big, big um, 
I don't know, a big, big icon for the British people. And so we'll see how they play that out in this uh, opening introduction to Diana in the series as well. And don't forget Camilla Parker Bowles was introduced last season. So we'll, how will she play into this season and the affair that Charles has with her behind Diana's back? So, so much uh, intrigue and drama, certainly, Alex, that we're going to get into here uh, on this show, yeah. I think. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree. It's, I mean, drama intrigue, you know, that's, that's the crown for you. Yeah. I also, like, like you said, where a lot of people are like talking about like British Royal, um, uh, British Royal, uh, you know, people that, yeah. you know, that know everything about historians and everything, as well as the, you know, the British Royals themselves, I mentioned, there's a lot of, you know, they don't agree with a lot of the, <laughs> these things and they're, you know, True. obviously they don't agree with it. It's, it's a, it's an interpretation of them that they don't like. Let's yeah. not. Yeah, you know I mean, like, and like, a, like, if I see a picture of myself on the internet that makes me look like, you know, a hungry, hungry hippo, which I am ninety percent of the time, I still don't <laughs> want that on the internet. You know, I don't like, like, I, I don't want that out there, even though it one hundred percent is true. But, oh, but this is you know, I'm like, nah. you know, that's just like that's why I am ninety five percent of the time. But, <laughs> but realistically, it just this is this is definitely an interpretation. This is historical fiction. Yeah. This is not real. Um, um, this is just one interpretation. This is just an interpretation of of events that really happened. It's just yeah. such a the It's like Hamilton. It's not real. Right, right, right. It, it, you know, it's it's like that Hamilton. It did happen, but it didn't happen. You know, right. that's like it's taking out huge areas about what happened about the founding fathers. It's completely a, like removing a lot of sections of history mm -hmm. that would be very influential uh, in the conversation, but. Yeah. We want it for the story. We're here for the story. And a lot of exactly. the characters in particular, you know, like you said with Diana, I am so curious to see how that's going to go down. Like the mm -hmm. wedding, it was like the first media focused wedding for the royals yeah. Yeah. on that level. Oh, there's a lot to dive into. Is, yeah. is, is, I got to know, is Posh Spice and David Beckham going to come in at some point? I got to <laughs> know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, a real question I need to answer, guys. <laughs> well, they already said they're going to do, I think, two more seasons, seasons five and season six, and that'll have um, uh, Imelda Staunton is coming in to take Olivia Coleman's spot as Queen Elizabeth getting older. So that'll be fascinating. Imelda Staunton, no wallflower, a very strong lady. Those of you who remember her from the Harry Potter series, she's not anywhere to mess with so it'll be fascinating to see what she does in her interpretation of uh elizabeth as this goes forward um uh, the crown season four uh brings back helena bottom carter tobias menzies aaron doherty as princess anne if yeah if she's fantastic as princess anne mm -hmm. emerald uh, fennell is coming back as camilla parker bowles marion bailey as queen mother georgie glenn tom Byrne. Uh, Angus Emmerich and Charles Dance as Lord Mountbatten and, Mountbatten and Charles O'Connor, of course, coming back as Prince Charles. So that'll be fun uh, on so many levels to explore. Anyway, just wanted to touch on that and then talk about it as it just came through this morning. All right, we got some super chat here real quick. Lewis Cox says, hey, John and Alex, both of you are awesome. Keep doing this show. Much love from England. Thank you, Lewis. Very kind of you. Um, Simon Davis chimed in. Yeah, she ruined both industry and the lives of many everyday people. Sure, Simon, and other and for other people, they, they she was mm -hmm. positive for them. So it all depended on where you were on the economic economic bracket at the time for her policies. And a lot of people say that uh, Thatcher was responsible for Brexit. The idea or the idea of removing themselves from the European Union is kind of all kind of goes all the way back to Thatcher and her desire to keep England independent and separate. From uh, the from Europe, so it it has its l seeds in there as well. Uh, we have a stream lab that came through here from Ben Rainer, Ben underscore Rainer. Thank you, Ben. Always good to see you. <clears throat> he says, "Hey, John and Alex, happy Thursday with Halloween on Saturday. I have a weird question for you. If you could be a universal monster, which would you be? Vampire, werewolf, invisible man, which I know tech not a classic, or Frankenstein's monster? So, <laughs> Alex, what would you be?" Vampire, werewolf, invisible man, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, I think, kind of counts, or Frankenstein's monster. Uh, first, it is uh, Frankenstein is uh, Frankenstein's monster. How dare you? He is not a monster. Okay. How dare you? He is not a monster. He is a beautiful person that has been wronged his entire life. And he has been manipulated and hurt and abused. Sure. That's not his fault. Okay. He's not a villain. Anyway, but I would probably go with Witch. Uh, okay. <laughs> probably. I feel like uh, either that or Bride of Frankenstein would be pretty pretty cool as well. I could see um, that. Bride of Frankenstein would be awesome. 
the 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 invisible man i like the idea of it like who doesn't want to pretend to be invisible a little bit but thing is you can't make yourself visible unless you like completely cover yourself so that sucks (laughs) <laughs> but, yeah. That's true. You have to wear the blanket or something every once in a while. Um, I think for me, it has to be a vampire. The idea of living forever. <clears throat> Some would argue oh. I, still am, I still am a vampire. But like, yeah, the idea of living forever, staying a certain age, looking a certain way forever. Um, and especially with what we do in the shadows, it's a funny take on that. Um, I think vampire, because werewolf is so, you're so out of control. The second that moon shows up, you got no shot here. You immediately become the werewolf. You kill people left and right. Uh, people trying to kill you all the time. Whereas a vampire, you know, you, you, you do your things. You do your things. You got to feed. You got to live your life. So uh, that's what you're, I are So you are in control, but you still yes. kill a whole bunch of people. True. So it's but a matter I mean, of you. So you want to kill people just on your terms. Kind of. Yeah. Like I want to. Yeah. Because I. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That's, a, that's like, like Dexter. That. Like Dexter, essentially. <laughs> oh, God. No. That's Something what he better. does. Something he better killed than people Dexter, yes. on his terms. That's he he did kill people on his terms, right? Who he deemed yeah. to be unworthy or criminal. Exactly. Or like you, yeah. like hypothetically, if you were like a vampire Roka, I could picture you like killing exclusively assholes yes. or something. Yes. Or be like, yeah, that's a really awful person. I'm going right. to kill him. I'm gonna I wouldn't just fly him. off the handle too because if I'm living forever, I got to mm-hmm. like, I have time to like monitor the situation. Do I really yes. want to kill this person? Mm-hmm. Yes, this person I deem to be worthy of death. Yes. And I'll. Would you sparkle? Well. Sparkle? <laughs> no, <laughs> not sparkle. Wow. Okay. Nope, <laughs> sorry. Much? No Whatever. offense. No offense. <laughs> but I might There's wear the wrong with sparkle. There's nothing wrong with a nice sparkly vampire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I might wear the puffy shirt though. I might wear the puffy shirt. That's for sure. Ooh, interview. like Lestat. Yeah, oh my like gosh, Lestat. with the fluffy like oh. Tom Cruise. It's Colin. <laughs> I, love I would it. love that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lewis Cox sent in another one. He said, uh, "Hey, John, Alex. Oh, he sent. Uh, he sent two of them. All right, thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that." Uh, Draws Walkers Nine says, "Good morning, Outlaw Alex and the Nation. I hope the Outlaw had a great birthday weekend. Love your Tardis shirt, Outlaw. Yeah, this is one of the shirts I got uh, for my birthday. A Doctor Who shirt, a Tardis shirt. I uh, had to get it." Um, so I'm excited. I thought I'd bust it out today as we're talking a little bit of British stuff right off the bat. So loving the shirt. Thank you very much, Charles Walker. Thanks for being a part of the nation and watching the show. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, Lewis Cox sent in another. He says, hey, John and Alex, again, if you could be a superhero, who would you be and why? Interesting. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh, that's a big question. <laughs> Storm? Okay. <clears throat> pretty cool okay like, no right. one be, like if we're gonna go like i i, I want to stick to universe let's let's like stick to a universe i feel like any superhero is too big of a question okay like you want to go with marvel or like a marvel sure superhero in sure sure let's do marvel um i think after having seen the movies it would have to be iron man because i could still be a regular dude i've got a lot Celebrity. of money yeah, celebrity. I'm. Mm-hmm. I can use my powers for good. I've got a good crew of friends, and yeah, I would be Uber security guy. Like that's a big deal to me. My girlfriend gives me shit about it all the time. Whenever we walk through the door, I'm always putting on all three of the locks and all this. Like I'm always locking things and doors because I always think someone's gonna break in and steal stuff. So I had this idea mm-hmm. that I have to protect everything. So Tony, when he comes up with that thing that's going to protect the entire world or monitor everyone's conversation to make sure there's no issues with security or get ahead of any possible terrorist attacks. I kind of understand that. So I think that's where I would uh, kind of slot myself in. And I don't, I'm like, I'm not Asgardian. I'm not, I don't turn into the Hulk. Um, I don't have like issues about killing people in uh, secret missions uh, like Hawkeye and, and Scarlet uh, Black, I'm sorry, Black Widow do. I'm just a regular dude who knows about technology. So I think that would be fine for me. Like Batman. No, Batman's got a lot of issues, man. I mean, Batman is... Right. He Like, Batman literally needs to be put into a psych ward. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Um, th- well, the thing is, it's kind of funny you say that. Well, I mean, I think that's also like the military man in you, yeah. you know? Yes. Like, you know, that has that sense of protection. Well, mm-hmm. also, I've heard it argued that if we just... If... if, um, if 
Iron Man didn't do his thing as far as like monitoring the world. We wouldn't, the world wouldn't have all the issues that it does. Oh, okay. And I've also heard that argued uh, similar to uh, Batman. Like Gotham would be a pretty awesome city if Batman would just stop being Batman. If he just stopped <laughs> being a vigilante. And <laughs> if it, it like I, I've heard that like argued like pretty consistently. Like I, yeah. I heard it argued by a psychiatrist because he is like without because of him because the Joker would stop hanging doing his thing. Yeah. A lot of the villains would stop doing his thing. The Gotham City Police would actually like actually start to do well. Yeah. <laughs> would actually learn to thrive surprisingly somehow some yeah. way. You know, if they didn't have to rely on Batman, like 95% of the time. Yeah, when you have a superhero, sometimes, and I think that's a great point you bring up, Alex. You mentally go, well, I've got a backup plan. If I don't catch this car, exactly. I've got a backup plan. So I don't need to work that hard, you know. And that's whenever you have a backup plan, that's when you find most humans, not every human, but most humans uh, mm -hmm. kind of don't work as hard on plan A if they have a plan B. That's why a lot of people tell you in the world of art, sorry, in the world of creative arts, in the world of um, business or technology, don't have a plan B because you're always going to fall back to that plan B and you're not going to mm -hmm. work hard on plan A. It's a dangerous way to live, but some people are more motivated to give more of themselves when they don't have a plan B than if they than if they do. Um, so, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Thank you, Lewis Cox. Appreciate that question. I got one more Streamlab that rolled through here. Let me uh, take this out here. So, so, so is Iron Man. There you go. Um, let's see. Uh, Andrew G says, hey, guys, I really need some help with something here. I need to know how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Yeah, there you go. You got me, Andrew G. Nice. Seven pounds. Oh, seven pounds. There you go. The seven answer pounds. is seven pounds. All right. I like it. Yeah. I like it. And it's seven pounds per minute, actually. So <laughs> if we, if we, it depends on the kind of woodchuck, you know, the breed of woodchuck. Right, right, so right, right. That's a, mm, because sometimes it's nine and a half pounds if we want to get specific. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Mm. I don't have pounds, no. I respect it, I respect it. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> no worries. Uh, let's jump into our next story here. This is a pretty exciting story. Uh, we, we're hearing the news over the last few days, Alex, about Moon Knight. Uh, Moon Knight is uh, Oscar Isaac is going to step in and don uh, the uh, famous white cowl. Uh, this, fa uh, this famous white cowl, for those of us who've been fans of Moon Knight for quite some time. He's been around since 1975, so relatively new. Uh, character. Uh, when you look at the, uh, you know, the other characters that we deal with normally in Marvel or DC in the world of superheroes, he's only what three or four decades old. Uh, so kind of relatively new still as a character in the history there. So uh, uh, Oscar Isaac is stepping in, but we also got news that this Egyptian director and writer Mohamed Diab is going to step in to be the director of the series. You know, RB3 and I were having a discussion about this on SCN Live on Monday, and he said, like, you know, I'd love it if they had cast an Egyptian actor. And I pushed back a little bit, and I said, well, if the character itself is not Egyptian, uh, but having people involved in the show who are Egyptian, I think, would be interesting because there is, of course, that connection with the character of Moon Knight, Mark Spector, with the Egyptian god Khonshu, uh, so having an Egyptian director come in to direct the series, I think is a brilliant, brilliant decision by them. Uh, Mohamed Diab is, is building his name in the world of film, certainly in the world of international film. He's got quite a resume. So bringing him stateside, so to speak, to direct this series for uh, uh, Disney Plus and for the MCU for Kevin Feige and over there at Marvel it's pretty exciting stuff, Alex. What was your reaction to this? Are you are you looking forward to Moon Knight with Oscar Isaac, Mohammed Diad? I think it's Jeremy Walter, the gentleman who uh, wrote uh, um, uh, the Umbrella Academy season one and two. Uh, he's in charge of writing uh, mm -hmm. for Moon Knight. Are you excited about this team coming together for this series? I'm excited about this director. I am so excited. Excited. That's not a word. I keep bringing up in, in words that aren't real, Roka. What is wrong with me? I don't know. I'm just tired. You're in transition <laughs> right now. I think you can yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, what is, what is time? <laughs> Timing, whammy kind of situation. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. See what I did there? Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's definitely well i'm honestly not a huge i'm not familiar with the moon knight all that much i've been okay. I've, I've heard him compared to batman quite yes. a bit sorry we keep coming back to batman i've heard him compared to batman quite a bit and as far as being like a very wealthy vigilante kind of situation and you know it you know oscar isaac he is wonderful and everything i mean yeah. do we need to bring up like the his dancing gifts from from uh whatchamacallit 
the 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 ro robot movie. Robot yeah, movie. Ex Machina. Yeah, Ex Machina. That one. Yeah. Oh, just him dancing. Oh. Yeah. I was like, yes, he's so great and everything, <laughs> you know, and, you know, him potentially taking on, you know, the Moon Knight character. I'm so excited for, I just love him and everything again. And also with the idea of international directors, I'm super excited. The only thing I'm really hesitant on is the writer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a okay. huge fan of uh, the Umbrella Academy. I like, okay. I, I think it's fine. You know, I think it's, but it's just the, the story itself was, I think it was like too much for me. And okay. And it was, you know, it's and the writing I thought in part particular was actually one of the parts I least liked about it. I think that's why okay. it was so confusing for me. And so uh, that's why that's my only hesitation about hearing about a lot of these releases. Okay, I can absolutely understand that. Uh, you know, if you if that's the thing, if you're not a fan of the work they've done previously, then it'll give you hesitation. Uh, so I, I totally respect your point of view on that. It's Umbrella Academy is one of those uh, so shows, one of those series that is kind of, um, it's an acquired taste. You know, you have yeah. to be into the characters, into the way they're creating the stories, into the drama of this family and their intertwining stuff. Some of the characters can be irritating, can be grating. Some of the frustration you feel like, come on already, get together and handle this thing uh, can be a mm -hmm. bit irritating for some people who aren't dialed in. I personally like the Umbrella Academy. I think season two is better than season one, uh, but I can totally understand if, so, if it isn't someone's cup of tea having a bit of hesitation. So it also says to me, though, that because uh, uh, Jeremy Walter, and that's his name, uh, uh, Jeremy Walter, uh, because he was, uh, he did, or I'm sorry, Jeremy Slater, because he did what he did with that um, uh, series, you have a grounded New York City uh characters but still with superhero powers and fantastical abilities so i think that's why you bring someone in like this they have a proven mm -hmm. track record of getting these of doing characters like this and of course certainly uh, uh with moon knight you have that because mark specter is a mercenary he's also been a cab driver named jake lockley he's also a millionaire playboy stephen grant so there are numerous identities for the moon knight and i wonder if this is going to be a thing where they have this guy suffering with multiple personality disorder or PTSD or something like that. So he's creating these alter egos. And the Moon Knight is part of it uh, through the Egyptian god Khonshu, his influence or its influence on him, how that's going to all play out. But he's a New York-based guy. So he's a New York-based guy who uh, who has these fantastical abilities. So having someone come in from Umbrella Academy, I think it's a, it's a smart move overall. Uh, to to see what they can do with it, but hesitation on your yeah. side is totally understandable for sure. Yeah, I, I do one hundred percent. You know, understand why he was brought on. You mm -hmm. know, something I think it's what there there are aspects of the Umbrella Academy. Even though I'm not a fan of the show, I have read a handful of the you know the graphic novels yeah. by Jared Way, and I'm like it, it's it's just not for me, and I I respect that. You know, there's yeah. so many different interpretations of the story, but you know, it, it's just like it's just such a messy show for me personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just took a lot of the enjoyment out of it. But some things I d really didn't like was the ridiculousness of it. Like, yeah. like the, the, these two time traveling, spacey, out of this world potential assassins <laughs> that are somehow controlled by a corporate company. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's it's really it's really weird. And they like yeah. they get it's like a whole thing. Well, thing is, there's and not to mention they wear these like big uh, like stuffed head thingies. You know, like mm. like mascot heads. You know, there's there's a lot of you know fantastical elements. You know, that yeah. I really really enjoy. Obviously, he is comfortable with that kind of writing style. He is mm -hmm. comfortable working with a lot of that sci-fi by fantasy, you know, magical elements yeah, that I think would yeah. really do well for the show. Maybe something also with a something to consider is that there's a real darkness to the Umbrella Academy, which I really do respect. Yeah. You know, you know, like you said, with the family drama, you know, everything going on between the siblings, you yeah. know, this uh, idea with the kid, he's like literally like a 60 year old lonely man right. <laughs> trapped in a body right. with like a 10 year old. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, there's a lot of darkness in the show. And I think That's that would really translate to, you know, the Moon Knight really, really effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great point by uh, Jenna James as well. It throws in here. She says, I'm weary of Moon Knight on Disney+. Plus. It's a character that needs a TV MA rating. 
the tone, at least comic wise, is very Doom Patrol, Watchmen, Legion like. Uh, John, yeah, absolutely agree with you, Jenna. It is. You know, I can pull down like five of my Moon Knight books here that I have. They, I always have it ready to go because it is a little more of a darker uh, uh, character, and I like darker characters. I enjoy when they're done well. Darker stories within comics because they usually reflect what's going on in our world, our society, or the darkness of our world. Sometimes, and yes, comics can be escape. But I also like when comics reflect back to us through their characters, uh, stuff that's going on in our world as well. Moon Knight certainly struggling with multiple personality disorders, struggling with mental health. So he's on a, he's on the spectrum. That kind of stuff is fascinating to see him uh, 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 deal with. And remember, Tony Stark had an alcoholic storyline that they took out of uh, this Iron Man here for Disney. So I wonder, and I hope uh, if they will, I hope I, want, I hope they don't, and I wonder if they will take out the idea that he's got he struggles with multiple personalities or he's on the spectrum or some of the violent ways in which he administers justice we were speaking about me being a vampire killing people i think are assholes certainly mark specter the moon knight kind of like specter itself in dc uh, and kind of like batman in certain iterations can dole out some very brutal bloody graphic justice so i wonder if they will dial into that uh, or if they'll t dial it back a little bit because it's Oscar Isaac, because they want these characters to transfer over into feature films. I wonder if they'll they'll kind of like, you know, tamp that down a little bit. What do you think, Alex? I, I can definitely see that potentially happening. I don't know if I want it to happen overall, yeah, personally, right. just because what makes shows like The Mandalorian as great as they are is that, and thing is, um, the thing is, I, there's a lot of hesitation with the idea that this Moon Knight is, in particular, is being on, like, like you said, Jenna, uh, Jenna, you know, with the the rating and everything. You know, I definitely agree. This would definitely need. It's kind of similar to like Constantine, where it needs to be an R. <laughs> All right. A right. minimum, a PG thirteen kind of situation. Right. Minimum. You know, and you know, it, with a movie or a TV show like on a on a more traditional platform like ABC or NBC or something you know I could right. definitely see that like being successful heck Amazon right but with Disney plus they're not going to get that severe you know you know the darkest stuff they have is you know like the Mandalorian isn't that dark realistically it's made for families it's made for kids yeah. and and I think you know if it were to be on like something like DC, you know, the DC app or anything like that, that'd be awesome. But you know, I, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Do you yeah. think that it's a great idea trying to lighten the whole, like uh, lighten the whole characters, or like maybe they're going to omit a lot of those aspects of you know mental illnesses? Yeah, that's what I worry about. Like, how, how much yeah. of this are they, they going to tell a straight story that Mark Spector is this? <clears throat> he's this uh, kind of he's these archaeologist or this anthropologist, and he's gets involved. He's essentially like Indiana Jones kind of vibe to him, um, and, uh, and a mercenary as well. So he's got all these kind of aspects to him. Uh, are they going to just play that angle out because that's cool and fun and whatever, or are they going to actually explore the fact that he does uh, appear as different personalities, different names, and different uh, different um, jobs that he's doing. Are they going to explode? So I hope they do, Alex. And um, I don't necessarily think Marvel has a propensity to shy away from that kind of stuff overall. Um, and we've seen people struggling with certain things. But if you're going to expand this thing out and you're going to open the door to what Tessa Thompson said, more diversity. Diversity doesn't just always mean people of color or women, it also means exploring these um, very real things that people struggle with in our world, mental health. Mental health is a segment of diversity. Mm -hmm. People who are handicapped, mm -hmm. people, who are, people who are struggling with physical issues, that's all part of diversity. Diversity includes everybody. So mm -hmm. you wanna have diverse points of view. So someone who is struggling with a multiple personality disorder, but also a superhero capable of such power that's an interesting thing to explore. If they don't explore it, I get it, but I think an opportunity will get lost in the long run. So maybe they'll allude to it and have shades of it, but not fully explore it. I do wonder how people with mental illness feels about this character in particular, because mm -hmm. let's be honest, I mean, as far, when it comes to mental illness, 
TV and film doesn't really have a great history of depicting mental illness successfully sure. and accurately uh, on screen. If anything, it, in, in most cases, it villainizes, you know, the it villainizes the issues and mm -hmm. makes it seem like the reason why these uh, people. Uh, the reason why crimes happen is because people with mental illnesses are yeah. in the streets. Like, no, if anything, people with a lot of mental illnesses, like bipolar or um, like you said, schizophrenia, and uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, multiple personalities, things like that, they're significantly, significantly much more likely to have you know uh, crimes committed against them. Unfortunately, yeah. so I'm kind of yeah. curious to see how that's if what is going to be the reaction from people with you know with those kinds of disabilities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you are going to be, if you are going to be going, getting, making a superhero with a lot of those issues, like, is, I'm kind of curious, are we going to have our first superhero that's openly taking meds? Yeah, I, 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 I mean, is it, <laughs> like, shouldn't I, that be a possibility? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, would I like that. I would love him for me, like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's nine o'clock, therefore I take my, this medicine, right. because right. I am, a, you know, you know, it's six o'clock, I, I, I have my breakfast there, I have my dinner, therefore I take this medicine. I would love it if they normalize medication on that kind of level. Oh. I think Alex, you're absolutely a million percent right. And I would love to see that as mm -hmm. well. That would be so cool uh and you know kind of convey that kind of they kind of explore it and uh, yeah i think that would be awesome as well and and have someone who deals with it in a in a at times troubling way but overall positive mm -hmm. way i think that would be great as well uh mm -hmm. and people need that people need to see that they need to see themselves represented uh on screen and on t these tv shows uh let's see lewis cox says john as superman seems the right choice <laughs> and alex is either batgirl or captain marvel oh yeah i could totally see alex as, oh. uh, either way. I, I can definitely see that batgirl mm, <laughs> i respect that point but if anything i'm more of a kelly carrie kelly girl you know oh oh right, right. uh if, if we're gonna be if i'm gonna be particularly honest you know i definitely again i respect that you know <laughs> you know i respect that idea you know absolutely you're more of a robin I, is what you're saying Kelly kelly robin from batman i no the thing is a batgirl you know she is a she's a loner she's doing she her is. thing and i respect that about her thing right. is i am very much a team player I love being part of a team. It's something I actively prefer versus being alone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I just like with Carrie Kelly, if you don't know, she is like this awesome, like female Robin. She's like a yeah. former gymnast. I can't touch my toes, but, which is embarrassing, but <laughs> it's really embarrassing. You're probably more flexible than I am, Roka. Are you flexible? I doubt it very, very oh, seriously, no. Alex. I'm more flexible. You are you are still probably like my even my even my doctor has mentioned my, my doctor has like mentioned like why are you so inflexible? And I'm like, I don't know. My doctor is like weirded out by my complete inflexibility. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> but sorry, TMI, I apologize. Right. It's all right. No, <laughs> but no. it's Carrie Kelly all the way. If we're gonna go in the world of Batman, Carrie Kelly. I like it. I like it. Uh, Lewis Cox says, uh, I feel like Moon Knight series could be better on Hulu. In my opinion, well, I mean that's that's fair. I haven't seen Hellstrom, and I know it's getting good reviews, so I can't wait to dive into Hellstrom. But if they're doing a good job with Hellstrom, then there's no reason that a Moon Knight series couldn't exist. Also, Hellstrom being a Marvel property couldn't exist on Hulu. That would be fascinating. I'd be down with that, Alex. Yo, I love Hellstrom. I've been <laughs> really? watching okay. it. Okay. If you if do like a bunch of reviews on that show or something. I want to dive into this okay. <laughs> so bad. I like that. Yeah, like, just, okay. just putting that out there into the universe. It's like I was just I, I, I like I don't like horror all that much, mm -hmm. and I was just like thoroughly taken aback by how much I enjoyed it. I I don't think it's amazing, but I'm like right. this is just weird horror fun, you know, okay. and I love it. Right. I respect that. Yeah, and absolutely. Let's mm -hmm. let's definitely have a conversation. If 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 I burn through them this weekend, then yeah, let's set up a, a review. I'd love to do it for the channel. Um, all right, got a couple of Streamlabs that have come through here. Uh, ben underscore Rainer says, about Moon Knight, it's MCU and Kevin Feige. I think they're going to keep the tone of MCU, but look at the, and look at the success of the MCU. I have faith in Kevin Feige to give something with quality. He hasn't let us down yet, right? No, true, true. For the most part, he hasn't let us down. Um, and, uh, you know, he's very committed to pulling this phase off. So many uh, things are in the way with COVID and delays and what have you. But certainly, yes, I agree with you. I think Kevin Feige is the man for the job and will figure this thing out. What do you think, Alex? 
Yeah, I mean, the man can do no wrong outside of like Thor 2. So, I mean, like that and arguably Iron Man 3, but I actually like Iron Man 3. I'm like one of the few. But <laughs> um, yeah, the man can clearly do no wrong. I am kind of actually, I feel like that kind of begs the question of what is Feige going to do after wrapping up MCU? That's that's a big question. Yeah, created uh, his job. Well, it's down the road, uh, but a lot of people have been saying like he'd be, you know, taking over Star Wars, and would that be something down the road he'd want to do? I don't know. Uh, We don't know what Kathleen Kennedy is going to do. Her contract extension is up next year. Uh, So, what what role will Kevin Feige find himself in in the overall Disney tent? I don't know. And maybe for him, he'll have like you know, kind of gotten tired of it all and want to go do something else completely separate. You know, sometimes producers and creative. Uh, creatives want to step away from you know a huge tent they've already been a part of and kind of do something else or establish something else. Maybe Feige will want to do that, but I'd, I'd really doubt they'd let him go. I'd really, I think they'd back the truck up. However, they need to back the truck up to make sure he uh, with money to make sure he can stay in the family and do his thing. But uh, you raise an interesting point, Alex. We don't know what Kevin Feige is going to do, and will he have to keep doing? It? Will he want to keep doing it for sure? Yeah, he's uh, such a unique person within yeah. hollywood because there's yeah. like before him there wasn't really there wasn't there isn't there wasn't a job really that oversaw universes movie universes right. before and as far as story and writing and characters and all that yeah, kind of stuff and, you're right. and he start he started in the 90s he worked wow. on daredevil the the first daredevil with john favreau <sighs> that's he was like on as like a, a you know it's like a producer but you know he also like felt with like Blade and, you know, yeah. a lot like the first Star, not Star Wars movie, Jesus, uh, X-Men movie. So he's been doing this actively for like almost 30 years, like 25 yeah. years, arguably. Yeah. So it's, I, I can imagine he wants to do something different. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Doug Developer mm-hmm. asks a very interesting question. He says, as a proponent for representation and diversity, is it truly so if the actor is of mixed race instead of full? As an Asian male, I appreciate Henry Golding, but we all know he's not fully Asian. And I think it's kind of a Hollywood yes, shoot. And Alex uh, D. D. I don't know what that means. Is that supposed to mean something? I don't know. Uh, so, uh, so I think, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely, I kind of agree with you to a certain extent, you know, mm-hmm. it's, and you know, I didn't know Henry Golding wasn't fully Asian. I didn't realize he was mixed. Um, <laughs> you know, huh. you know, it, it's you know, I it, you know, it's definitely something we know. But I mean, it's it's very much like I'm I'm passing for white. That's the thing, you know, oh. you know, and I I have so much white privilege as a result of that. You know, that I I know I recognize. Um, you know, and thing is, like a lot of you know, a lot of my friends that are also mixed have thing is, but things they're not passing. You know, that you would never know that they're they're just as white or more white than me, but they they look so they look, they look <laughs> like full Chinese, they look full Korean, and so it kind of makes it it kind of makes it kind of iffy. If you didn't know that he was mixed, I wonder if that would change it at all. So. Yeah. That definitely it's a valid kind question. Of one. Yeah, it's a valid question. I agree. And it's one uh, that we struggle with as we start to become more, uh, I don't know, more as the tide starts to become bigger and bigger for diversity and full representation. Remember, uh, over just, just a few days ago or a couple of weeks ago, that 355 trailer came out and so many uh, Latino slash Hispanics were upset that Sophia, um, I'm sorry, that uh, Penelope Cruz who is of Spanish descent, uh-huh. was playing a Colombian uh-huh. woman, right? Spain is not Colombia, two different, completely different countries, but people were upset. I personally am excited about that. It means that we are not, we are past the, um, how can I say this? Past the surface level of diversity. Like just yeah. casting a Latino is not enough or a Hispanic is not enough anymore. Look for the actual uh, actor that is of that country's origin to represent that character. Uh, I like that. It means we're pushing the boundaries of diversity. And for people to go, well, what does it matter? The best actor should be cast. Sure, but that doesn't mean the best actor isn't from that country. That doesn't mean the best actor isn't mm-hmm. from that region of the world. And too many people default to that, thinking they've watched 
every single Colombian movie ever made. And there's no actors that could possibly match what Penelope Cruz is doing. That's simplistic thinking in my mind. And it frustrates me sometimes when people say that because I go, you have no evidence of it. You have to have absolutely zero evidence that you would know that Penelope Cruz is a better actress than any Colombian mm -hmm. actors alive. So it's just that kind of thing, you know. I'm watching um, the Fargo. I'm catching up on the current season of Fargo, and they brought in this authentic Italian dude from Italy who had made his bones as an actor in Italy to play this Italian character. They didn't default to cast mm -hmm. some dude who's from you know his Italian heritage here in the states. They went and got a guy who's actually Italian to play someone coming over from Italy. And that was, that adds an authenticity to the show. I don't know how, like, I do agree to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So that's like, so in that case, I absolutely agree. You know, there should be much more of an effort to include more people from that. Absolutely. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I don't know if that's if that if if we should keep in mind be like well, you know any Italian Americans absolutely we are just never gonna we're just not gonna acknowledge them for this role you know <laughs> even if they are fully Italian American right, right. you know um so are we just not gonna say hey you don't have the stories that we want we want authentic Italian but I'm. Um, 100% Italian. We don't care. It's not the Italian we want. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting situation. Um, you yeah. know, it's just like saying, it's like, you're Asian, but not the Asian we want. So it's right. just like, eh, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, am I not the right Asian you're looking for? It, uh, like, this is not the droids. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like, you know, um, also we wouldn't have, you know, one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, you know, with the Mask of Zorro with Antonio yeah. Banderas. That man is not Latino. He's Spanish. He's Spanish, yeah. Um, he's Spanish, not Latino. Um, Latinx, uh, you know, yeah. so it's you know it, it's definitely we have come a long way in terms of representation which is wonderful you yes. know but you know as we become a country where we're much more aware of people's ethnicities you know actors and hollywood's ethnicities like you said we we have an uh, an egyptian director yeah. you know doing moon night you know we are much more conscious of that but at the same time you know in that case hypothetically what if we had an egyptian director hypothetically here in the us would yeah. we be like no we want an authentic egyptian director we don't want an american egyptian director like right. is that a conversation that we would have to have yeah it's, it's yeah. just really yeah, it's just, it's really complicated mm -hmm. uh, situation to be in. It's a yeah. very much a privileged conversation that we are having though, which is yeah. really great. I, I'm in your boat as well. I'm, I'm full-blooded Latino from two parents who are immigrants from Bolivia, mm -hmm. yet I can, at times I have been white passing and I understand that and I get that. Mm -hmm. uh, people sometimes forget that I am Latino and that I do check that box on the diversity side of things, even in the Schmodown, People don't. Some people don't necessarily immediately think of me as a white, as a as a Latino person, and I've had that experience a number of times. And so it's just that kind of thing. So it's interesting, depending on how certain people's preconceived notions of what you should look like. You know, you look at Henry Golding. Someone mentioned this is Henry Golding and his dad, and his dad is full on, uh, as you said, full on white. He's oh, definitely gosh. mixed. His mom's mm -hmm. Malaysian, he, but his dad is 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 uh, full on white. But that I don't think that mm -hmm. means Henry should be removed because it's very clear that Henry is Asian and should him, and and him getting cast in these roles I think is a thousand percent a positive thing to keep the diversity representation going mm -hmm. and going forward and yes there'll be people who are clamoring about one second but I also don't think those voices should be ignored uh, or made mm -hmm. fun of or ridiculed it's okay mm -hmm. to have a spirited debate spirited conversation in the end you make the decision that's best for your project but it's okay to hear from these voices and think about it for your next project. Mm -hmm. And you might uh, have a little more interest in exploring and bringing in actors uh, from a certain region or country to represent the actor, mm -hmm. the character that you're creating from a certain region or country. Yeah, I mean, there's. It also kind of really, really makes you wonder if we did stay on, uh, stay on the topic of every. It's like if it, especially if it's a true story, you know, mm -hmm. if it's if it's especially if it's a true story where race is a huge part of it every yes. single time, which okay. I, you know, and ninety five percent of the time where it's actually actively relevant to right. the conversation, like you know, like if we're talking about. Um, 
you know, if we're talking about like he's like it was kind of a joke, you know, for a while, you know, like Harriet Tubman is uh, is a we're gonna have a Harriet Tubman uh, bi biography. Let's cast Julia Roberts and as Harriet Tubman. People won't know. Like, no, you have to cast a black actress because right. that's like the point of the movie. She's black, you know. Yeah. You know, she's a you know she's a former slave that escaped. You know, that's the whole conversation. You can't you cast a white actress in in that stead. But thing yeah. is, if we also you know where that's where a lot of my hesitation is i absolutely agree i'm like i'm gonna judge you if you're gonna cast a white actress in that role but i don't feel, know if i can stop you for i can't tell you you absolutely can't i can't tell you to do that because it's your movie but right. if we also apply that mindset like we wouldn't have hamilton we wouldn't yeah. like hamilton True. like we wouldn't have you know a yeah. freaking american play hamilton because yeah. he's amazing or and we wouldn't have black a mixed black man playing george washington so yeah. It's it's it definitely a complicated relationship where it's a where it's like it's okay to do mixed in these roles, but it's not okay to do mixed in these other roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's it's good to have the conversation. I think it's great. Some people get all like freaked out about it. It's just a conversation. Mm -hmm. Relax, everybody. Mm -hmm. Having a conversation it's good. is good. Even a spirited are conversation great. is good. Yes, exactly. Even a spirited one is fantastic. It's good mm -hmm. to have it every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Shakes the cobwebs out, and hopefully you leave from the conversation with a new perspective to consider. You don't have to agree. Too many people try to win debates or arguments. And the one of the greatest gifts I ever got from someone a few years ago said to me, he's like, this was in my early 30s, said to me, you know what? You get more out of trying to understand the other person's position than you do out of trying to win the debate. You can't always mm -hmm. try to be right. Sometimes it's better just to be heard. And that kind of blew my mind. The idea that a debate could actually be about hearing the other side or an argument could be about hearing the other side, not trying to win the argument. And it's a, it's, it changed my entire mind about so many things. So now when I debate with people or fight with people or argue or have a conversation, I'm very much trying to understand the other point of view so I could have that as a base point of reference. And it's important. And uh, I encourage all of you to, to follow that path as well. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, no more Streamlabs so far and no more Super Chats have come in. Keep them coming. We got about 18 minutes left in the show, about 20 minutes left in the show. So please, and oh, right on cue, Jason Earhart. Hey, Alex and John, happy Thursday. Good to see you, Jason. Really excited about Oscar Isaac's casting. I am interested to see where the show goes. So much potential. Hashtag in Marvel Studios, we trust. Yeah, I agree, Alex. So much potential here for sure. I don't trust Marvel all that much. I try, trust the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, do we really need to talk about X-Men Origins? Oh, that's, true. that's a that's a Marvel, that's a Marvel movie. Do we need to talk about some of these movies? The thing is, yeah. or you know, Dark Phoenix. Do we need to talk about Dark Phoenix. Well, yeah. But you know, they are dominantly like pretty fantastic. So yeah. you know, I'm. Like, you know, if I had put, if I didn't, I remember asking you that conversation uh, a long while ago. If you had to invest money in this, would you invest money in this project personally? With Moon Knight? Yeah. Uh, with the, with now, with the creative. With what you know now. With what you know, know now. now. Absolutely. With what I know now, totally invest money in. Before the Oscar Isaac casting, hesitating big time. No. But uh, because I don't know how Moon Knight's going to come off. Uh, but with Oscar Isaac, Mohamed Diab, and then uh, Jeremy Slater involved in this, yes, here's my money. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Let's see what we can do. So I was, a I'm absolutely down with that. Yeah. Um, oh. Sure. What about you? Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I would. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little delayed with you. No it's, worries. It's, no I'm worries. like, I'm like, I'm always like, I'm always uh, like scared to talk if like if you're talking, just no. because it's coming in a little wonky, um, yeah. Wi-Fi wise. But yeah, I mean, I personally, I would like it. We like we kind of mentioned earlier with conversations surrounding mental illness, and you yeah. know, like like I said, with my hesitation with a writer, you know, that's uh that's something I'm really I, I do think it's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. I would invest. Money in it for sure, but there's a lot of interesting things that they're gonna have to learn to deal with, you know, yeah. from this really interesting character and storyline. Yeah, agreed. so they're agreed. gonna be careful. I hope maybe uh, maybe it's gonna maybe <laughs> I hope they're kind of not careful because I want that I want an R 
what's this? is this gonna be the first like our property for a disney plus <laughs> Can I, like we make that that happen? I like that idea uh let's see uh cinema gorilla sent in the stream live said i think zendaya sets a good example for mixed actors she owns her blackness but knows when to back away from certain roles where the characters aren't mixed or dark skin i too am white passing mm -hmm. latino but native blood that's why i gotta keep preaching i know i respect the cinema it's always great to see you mm -hmm always uh spitting some truths brother so i appreciate it and yes that's the way to go that's the way if, if it's a if it's a mixed situation day absolutely but you know if it's full, you know for a different character that calls for a darker skin or a darker region in the world then you know you pull you step back out of that thing you know like i'm not going to go it, play mm -hmm. you know Evo morales in a movie the bolivian president i do not have that look or that appearance and nor would i ever try to get cast as that I think that's an insult to, to a native actor, a uh, native South American native so, actor that could play that, in my opinion. So if they called you and be like, yeah. here's $10 million, <laughs> you would say no? Really? I, I would at this stage, if they, yeah. you the, if, if, if they gave you the prosthetics and everything, nah, you would say wouldn't. no. You would nah. turn down an audition, just yeah. an audition. Yeah, I've turned down auditions before where I felt, where I felt like mm -hmm. it wasn't right. I mean, um, after 9-11, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they started sending me in for, uh, or trying to send me in for like playing terrorists or playing Arab characters or whatever, and I turned them all down. I never went in for any of those auditions. I just don't think money's mm -hmm. worth it, but it's something that you can't live with uh, or look at yourself in the mirror the next day. There are just certain things. That's why I never, play, I never mm -hmm. went out for gardeners. I never went out for valet roles, even in commercials. I never went out for any of that shit because I thought it was offensive. Even the El Pollo Loco, I am the head of that kitchen. That's a different character. Yeah, I put on an accent, but I'm playing the head of that kitchen. And that's a strong thing to convey, you know? And so to me, those are those, those certain yeah. things that I've made decisions with my career. Did it lead to an ultimate a hardcore success? No, but it's just my approach to things is uh, different. Other people would take it. Maybe they'll take the 10 million and be happy with it, but mm -hmm. uh, money never buys you happiness. It buys you comfort, but I don't think it ever buys you happiness, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, point. it's definitely, it's definitely a kind of a complicated, you know, conversation. Like mm -hmm. uh, I, I told Lucas, hypothetically, if uh, Disney Studios was like, Alex, we want <laughs> you. We're gonna make a, we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a Disney prince, live action Disney princess themed on Thailand. We wanna make a right. Thai Disney princess. I would be like one. Yes, <laughs> but my, but I, I, I kind of mentioned and, but I kind of mentioned, I was like, I don't know if I'm Thai enough or at least visually oh, to, interesting. to be cast hypothetically, if they were like, here's $10 million to be a Thai princess in a movie. Right, right. I don't think I am Thai enough visually to be a Thai princess, you right. know, in a movie. So because, you know, being a Thai princess, you know, it's all your nine times out of 10, you're full blooded, unless you're a distant yeah. relative, you know, unless that's the story, you know, but if you're going to do like a traditional Thai princess situation, you know, it's, you know, I don't, cause I'm not passing. I really, right. I'm not, unfortunately. So that's a very complicated situation, but it's also kind of funny with Zoe Saldana's situation is that she's mentioned numerous times mm -hmm. where she is, uh, she's been a numerous time where she, where she mentions like, I, I'm a lot of times not black enough. I am not white enough, you know, and, or, or you know, just because of the, because of the way she looks and she yeah. is absolutely stunning. She is arguably one of the most beautiful person on the planet. Let's be mm -hmm. honest guys, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, but she's like mentioned, you know, in, you know, growing up, she was never black enough, grow yeah. uh, but also she couldn't fit in the white group or the black group. So it's a very complicated situation. And I also don't want to tell her, be like Zeldana, you can only play mixed characters. Right, right. For the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, I would love to see her as Ariel Little, in Little Mermaid. That would have mm -hmm. been bomb. We're also going to yeah. get another black actress, you know, yeah. to be in that movie. Yeah. So it's, you know, yeah. it's kind of, like, can I only play hypothetically? If I were, if I were an actor, would I only play mixed characters for the rest I of my not. life? I hope not. I hope not. I think that's that up be, to you. That would be and I, that'd be really weird, though, yeah. right? Right. It would be. It would be. But it's your personal choice, right? If you wanted to construct a career yeah. where you only played those kinds mm -hmm. of roles, you could do that if you get enough cachet. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to establish yourself, certainly playing certain those, some of those characters, but then also expanding out to play characters mm -hmm. that that the ethnicity doesn't matter at all that's certainly what you want to do mm -hmm. in the long run you know i mean i think that's what's great about oscar isaac he has played white latino 
Italian. He has played it all across the board uh, because he's able to and he can, and that works. I think with person people of color, uh, I think we're not there yet where it's like, oh, you know, it's got to be this or that if you're a person of color. I think if you're a person of color, it's good to expand and explore these kinds of things, get these opportunities and really showcase what you can do because uh, mm -hmm. that's better to me than defaulting to a white actor putting on makeup or whatever, for God's sakes. Uh, Corey Scott Johnson said, the problem is Hollywood has, through the decades, tested to erase the darker skinned people of all race in entertainment. Corey, yes. you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Spike Lee Absolutely. talked about, or he did a whole film about that with School Days, the idea of lighter skin versus darker skin. Certainly with Latinos, that's a thing, lighter skin versus darker skin. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, even in, in the world of Italians, right? The darker Italians versus the lighter Italians, that, that, that is there within a lot of uh, people's heritage or ethnicities in the past. So, uh, but certainly Hollywood has done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's, a, there's a history. There is a very, mm -hmm. very not only in you, not only in Hollywood, but in yeah. different, you know, like in Bollywood or, you know, yeah. uh, I can't remember what, you know, in every, in every single, you know, um, film entertainment you know system around the world you know that has been the case you know it's not only for you know you know especially in asia you know like darker skin is associated unfortunately you know yeah. with lower class because yeah. it, because if yeah. you're darker skin you are outside you are outside you're probably working outside therefore you're probably lower class it's yeah. a horrible association and it's a horrible you know mindset and people are going through the process of bleaching their skin, giving yeah. themselves horrible, you know, skin diseases and everything. You know, yeah. it's just real. It's a, it's a whole conversation in and of itself. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely right, Alex. Uh, and shout out to Sean Barrett, too, who just donated a very nice. Thank you, Don Sean. That's very kind of you. He says, morning, John and Alex. And Alex, go Yankees for 2021. There you go, Alex. There you go. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I just... <laughs> no. No. We will kill the no. Yankees. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I'm awesome. Classy, guys. Uh, I'm very classy. <laughs> a classy bitch. Uh, let's see. Where are we at here? Where are we at here? Oh, we got about 10 minutes. Let's jump into these last two stories real quick, Alex, because they're on the thumbnail. We got to cover them. Uh, Avatar 2 and uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, they released some set photos. Uh, we've got here uh, for uh, their, uh, you know, one with Kate Winslet in her full on, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Like the, uh, the outfit that she's wearing in the water right here, just doing her thing, floating around. Kate looking pretty awesome, killing it. Uh, and shout out to those uh, filmmakers who are down there filming her as well, <laughs> you know, in their underwater suit. But look at her. She's so what character? It's got wings. Like, what is she playing? I wonder what new character is she going to be playing in this? And is she doing the is she doing the uh, Zoe Saldana route where she's playing a, a character? She's just playing a character, but is not a human who goes into an avatar. Is she doing her own thing? Uh, it looks cool overall, whatever it is. It looks pretty badass, and I love that Kate is still kicking it and doing mm -hmm. it uh, and getting her shots to show what she can do uh, in her career. Uh, what's your feeling there, Alex? <laughs> Are you frozen? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm apparently uh, I'm frozen. You're like you're going out a little bit for me. I'm sorry. It's my, okay. it's my and I no apologize. Way. Yeah, apparently she, uh, Kate Winslet, along with a lot of other actors, is mm -hmm. at, they've learned to hold their breath for some of them five minutes, six minutes. But Kate Winslet apparently learned to hold her breath for eight minutes for this role, yeah. which wow. is insane. Like Tom Cruise, he has apparently trained himself to hold his breath for 10 minutes underwater. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why? That's what I ask you, sir. What right. purpose is that going to serve you? Um, <laughs> but it's totally amazing. Thing is, what, what I think is more impressive is that, you know, Avatar is, you know, it's a whatever movie. Cool. Whatever. It's also one of the biggest films of all time. You can't argue that, obviously. The thing right. is, what's also more amazing about it is the process of making the movie. It created such, and uh, James Cameron is also a director where he's also, he's very experimental with the time of 
type of uh, film that he makes behind the scenes as far as like creating new techniques using film, new film technologies, things like that. And that he does that. He likes to challenge himself actively with every single film that he makes. And this is no exception. And he's literally filming actively underwater. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I feel for those, like poor camera guys or whatever is behind him. Like, what are they doing? Like, right. no, you're not being paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> to do this movie. Just, just putting that out there, guys. <laughs> so, you know, so the process of making this movie and how it's being, how it's being made, and mm -hmm. the actual Ooh. movie itself, which right. I feel like is a little problematic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does that makes yeah. sense. I, I hear you absolutely, uh, and yeah, we'll see what how her character plays into all of this and what. Uh, her uh, role is this. We saw the Edie Falco pictures the other day. She's definitely taking the spot of, uh, you know, the military commander of this whole situation. So what role is she going to play? So it's all fascinating and exciting. And hopefully we get a release date one day that actually comes true. We'll see as this, uh, uh, hopefully as the COVID situation finally gets under control. Uh, we also got Zack Snyder dropping a slate, uh, obviously starting to shoot now finally once and for all. His uh, Justice League, which is, which is going to come to HBO Max sometime next year, uh, that dropped as well. He put that on Twitter, the slate that he's using there to shoot the first few scenes. We know we had the announcement that Jared Leto's coming back. We, Amber Heard's coming back. Uh, Joe Manganiello is coming back. So there's a number of people coming back to be a part of this. And someone else, and a few people actually have said, this is no longer his cut. It's not a cut if you're shooting new scenes for it. And I think that's fair. This is his Justice League, mm -hmm. Zack Snyder's Justice League. That's the correct way to call it. I think you got to stop calling it the Snyder Cut, and I think that's why he stopped calling it the Snyder Cut. He understands, too, that this is his Justice League. It is not uh, a Snyder Cut of the Justice League So, because he's not using any of the Joss Whedon stuff from what we've been told. So there mm -hmm. it is. Uh, anything to about? Are you excited yeah. about that they're finally shooting, Alex, or do you are you kind of just like, eh, we'll see when it comes out next year? I don't want this at all. I, really don't. <laughs> okay. I, I don't. <laughs> I've, I've gone into many an argument about this. I, I really Have don't. You. I don't like the way it came okay. out. I don't like the process of making it. I don't like how the studios are like, you know what? You're right, fans. You know what? You're right, fans. You deserve this movie. And I'm like, dude, don't acknowledge that <laughs> don't do it you know so the thing is i think it's you know also what are they going to do with some characters like amber heard's you know atlanta or whatever her name is like what are they going to do with her um you know with, with all mira. the with craziness that's gone on with her mira yeah 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 well, it's going to be more i guess it's going to be more we'll see uh, i don't know what they're going to do <laughs> you know so it's a i it, it really kind of stresses me out. The only one of the parts that I am excited about is Joe yeah. Manganiello's character. I can't yeah. pronounce his name. Heck, I know. I'm sorry. I butchered it. But him. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. my favorite part outside of Wonder Woman, of course. He, and that score, that amazing score of uh, uh, Batman versus Superman is yeah. like the only part that I, I really actively loved about that movie, you know. That score is so great. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. Bleach that hair, dude. Get in there. That is why I'll pay stupid money to see this movie. So, um, yeah. yeah. Um, real quick, this is breaking, and I'm looking at it now. For those of you who are maybe uh, are some of our European watchers, and some of you who are European watchers are going to watch it later. Um, it has been announced this morning that Disneyland Paris is going to temporarily shut down with the new uh, wave of shutdowns happening here in Europe because of the spike in cases in a number of countries and in France. Uh, it, is, it is shutting down. Uh, they released a statement that in anticipation of the Christmas holiday, we will be taking reservations from December 19th through January 3rd and hope to be open based on prevailing conditions and government guidance at that time. So it's a temporary shutdown, the Louvre in Paris, uh, so that it would close until December 1st. The Musée d'Orsay, also in Paris, the museum uh, announced its closure on Thursday. Um, and the Centre Pompidou, which is a contemporary modern art museum in Paris, said it would close at 8 p.m. Sorry if I butchered that for any of my uh, our, our French uh, watchers or listeners. So uh, yeah, President Emmanuel Macron is uh, imposing this national lockdown. Uh, it comes days after the government imposed a curfew covering an estimated 46 million people right now. 
France has the fifth highest number of coronavirus cases worldwide with nearly 1.3 million and nearly 36,000 people have died. 520 people passed away on Tuesday. So clearly this thing is taking off and is not stopping anytime soon, unfortunately, and uh, sad to hear. So uh, did you ever get a chance to go to Disneyland Paris or anything like that, Alex? Mm -mm. Um, oh. When I did not, I went, when I was in China, I went through, um, but I went to a few theme parks, but it's kind of interesting. I'm actually really curious to see if uh, theme parks in Asia are going to be shut down in particular because the thing mm -hmm. is theme parks are very different um, in the West versus the East. In the yeah. West, we we love our rides. We love our roller coasters and things like that. Yeah. And they don't really have that in my, based on my experience, you know, in, in, um, in in china in particular and what i've been told the the yeah. preference of the preferred experiences because they prefer performances like shows and you know things yeah. like that and so they don't really care about you know roller coasters and big rides you know they like activities and you know yeah. things like that so um i i am kind of curious to see if uh, if they're going to be shutting down as well or not you know yeah. that'd be kind of curious to see you know um uh, so, and like you said, France is like doing, not doing really great right now as far as like responding to COVID. So I'm kind of, yeah, so it's really an unfortunate situation. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I, I'm also kind of curious about, you know, a lot of other theme parks, you know, around the world and how they're going to respond as well. Yeah, right. Uh, England, uh, Richard Ganther says England, Scotland, France, Spain. Yeah, many countries are shutting down again. Cer certainly we are in uh, a situation where numbers are increasing in 40 out of the 50 states. Uh, here, I think it's four. Actually, forty-six out of the fifty states where numbers have started to in, or have been increasing or starting to increase again. Uh, so you know we have not turned any kind of corner. Don't let anyone lie to you. There's no turning of a corner going on here, sadly. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens with our entertainment. Uh, Andrew G says, "Hope you all Americans are voting down there." Certainly, yeah, people are. I've seen a bunch of uh, uh, yeah, stuff on social media. Down well, he's from Canada, so to him, he's like down there. Oh, uh, got it, and, got it. So here in the states, he's what he's saying, essentially. Um, all right, and one last thing we should jump into before we go is ginger snaps. Alex, are you a ginger snaps person? Do you like the ginger snaps? <gasps> any of these? Please. Have I seen ginger snaps? Okay, ginger snaps, guys, and get yourselves ready. Ginger snaps is coming to TV. It's happening, y'all. Ginger snaps <laughs> is one of my favorite cult horror movies of all time. It is all about feminist horror. It is about coming into your sexuality. It centers on these two young women that get bitten by attacked by a werewolf, but also on uh, Emily, on the same day as they start their periods. Is that symbolic? I think not. You know, it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited about this? I'm drooling. Yes. That's how excited I, I am. It. I'm I drooling. I'm so excited about this <laughs> so much. Um, like literally salivating. Um, it's it's also really kind of curious to see because a lot of people that are involved in this particular is, you know, one of the, the original director and creator behind this movie, uh, yeah. and his name is John Fawcett. He's also an executive producer behind um, A War from Black. He's also yeah. worked with a lot of series, you know, with Sally Wood, Gentle, Lee Morris, Clark, uh, Clark Peterson, but a lot of people are involved. The mm -hmm. person that I am kind of curious about, the writer, uh, her name is Anna C. Muriaba. I can't okay. pronounce it. Okay. Uh, I yeah, I'm sorry for I am completely butchering the name Simur Yaba, uh, but she's been involved with uh, TV shows like Gorilla, mm -hmm. and you know they're more international TV shows. Uh, you know they're they were uh, pretty popular in Canada from what I saw, but we right. didn't we don't really know too much about them here in the U.S. Um, they are gonna now if you don't know though. This is also going to be from Sid Gentle Films, Copperhead Entertainment. They're teaming up for this reboot, you know, specifically, you know, and they've they're more known for their television. They were behind Killing Eve, which is arguably the best one of the best shows on television. Absolutely. Guys, if you haven't seen that, which also censors on to two women, one being a complete, you know, assassin serial killer, sociopath lady, and the other one being like a detective, essentially. To yeah. find her, but they have this weird connection. So I, I, I'm sure that's gonna really gonna play into this, you know, this one as well. Because like I said, these are sisters. One, she ends up owning her sexuality and becomes a werewolf, and she really uses that to her advantage. The other yeah. one, you know, she decides not to, you know, become a she well, 
she gets she doesn't really get attacked by her werewolf, but she ends yeah. up working with her sister quite a bit. So it's a lot of weird stuff, guys. It's so mm-hmm. weird. It's available on Tubi. There's like twelve of these Ginger Snaps movies. Go yeah. check it out, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> And they're Canadian, from what I understand. So you don't get too much Canadian horror that rolls over into America. So, Alex, that's positive as well. And, yes, these uh, two ladies who've been doing this series for quite some time, it's exciting to see. I wonder what their uh, contribution is going to be, what parts they're going to play. Emily Perkins and Catherine Isabel. Certainly Catherine Isabel is someone you've seen in other things as well. So um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if these – if they're going to be like the old, the elder states women – of this situation and guiding other young women through this same thing. I wonder what the overall plot's going to be, but I'm excited to see mm-hmm. this happening and it coming and being a TV series so more people can get into the Ginger Snaps universe because these are some criminally underseen werewolf movies and people don't talk about them anywhere near to the level that they should. Uh, and they're mm-hmm. They just deserve way more attention than they've gotten. Uh, and so I'm excited to see what they do with the TV series of this. And of course, it's the right time, Alex. You know, female empowerment, female leads, female issues, female strength. This is a very a conscious decision by a lot of studios, uh, both TV and film, to start to find these uh, uh, projects and, and greenlight these projects. And now something like this is very reminiscent of... Um, not the crowd. What is the one? Oh, God, I was on the show. Charmed. It's very reminiscent of Charmed, right? We had that first Charmed, mm-hmm. and then now there's a new version of Charmed. Of course, those ladies are battling on social media, but that's beside yeah. the point. The idea is you get, you're get you rebooting this idea of these female-led, female empowerment shows. Ginger Snaps being a female-led, female empowerment uh, 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 horror uh, series. It's great to see it now going to TV and getting a new life. I'm, I'm excited for it. There. I absolutely agree. I mean, there's a lot of rural, there's a lot of big themes, like I said, as far as like mm. emerging sexuality, women's sexuality. Yeah. You guys have even noticed women are, we're, we're taught to be oppressed, yeah. repress our sexuality, ashamed you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're taught to be ashamed of it. You know, it's really, it sucks. You know, it's a mm-hmm. whole situation. You know, uh, you know, there's like a few, um, um, you know, it's there's a whole thing that you're dying, tying to sexuality and horror. You know, they yeah. really go hand in hand. It's kind of a joke. Like if you have sex, you know, if you have sex in a horror movie, you're gonna die. It's like a whole joke. Have you seen <laughs> the <Black> Spring, guys? <laughs> it's it's hilarious. It's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> Thing is, it's also when it comes to you know, thing is, revenge movies, horror movies uh, that include, or in also TV shows. You know, a lot of these. This, I'm a little hesitant also about this because as much as I love you know Ginger Snaps, I, as as excited as I am, I, I there is a lot of hesitancy on my part because I haven't seen a lot of shows like this mm. do well. Heather's, which is a black comedy, which right. is like with Ginger Snaps, failed. It bombed. Mm. A lot of cutback. Do you want to talk Charmed, the TV show? Is yeah. that even around anymore still? You know, there is... The um, one, no. yeah. a, oh, the, oh, I left the original. It was so good. Mm-hmm. The we, were, we also had the the craft, you know, legacies, right. you know, that just right. came out. It's going to be video on demand. I personally can't wait to see that, you know, mm-hmm. surprisingly so. But, you know, they're not exactly doing well, you know, <laughs> you know, so, but there's a lot of like horror movies, you know, like Raw, Teeth, um, yeah. Revenge, you yeah. know, I Spit on Your Grave, obviously, that really, they really do well with these. So movies tend to do well with a lot of these darker themes as far as, uh, you know, horror and sexuality and, you know, yeah. women's revenge. But TV doesn't, doesn't really have that, you know, it, because I, I feel like this might kind of be similar. I, I hope it's not going to be a similar situation to like Jennifer's body, which is a mm. very similar plot wise plot situation to Ginger Snaps. If you've seen G- uh, Jennifer's body, you've kind of seen Ginger Snaps. Same premise. <laughs> um, it's, it's the same okay. premise, um, yeah. you know, Fair. you know, so, you know, it, it, they don't really do well on the small screen. Do you think? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's justified? Do you think I'm kind of like making this up? You know, a little bit when it comes no, to this. No, I think you're absolutely justified, or, a thousand percent. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's. I think your comparisons are great. Uh, there is a new charm, to, but other than that, I think everything you said is absolutely uh, true, and it's good to see it. And uh, you know, look, um, there's a lot to con- to understand and connect with when you talk about. Min- we talked about earlier the minority representation, but also. 
the idea of like the reason there's a diversity explosion is because people have finally realized that, yeah, for years, not just in entertainment, in life, in everyday life, we have been uh, st stomping on my or other people have been stomping on minorities and keeping minorities down and keeping women down and being afraid of diversity and being upset about diversity. And this explosion of it is just a, an idea, uh, it's just a thing to a wave to make people aware that now that kind of behavior doesn't stand anymore. And going forward, people need to start embracing mm -hmm. the fact that we're going to get stories from multiple points of views now. We're going to have stories with very empowered women. It's not going to be new to see women empowered eventually. It's not going to be something to be like, you know, exclusive uh, anymore because hopefully we get multiple stories and multiple series uh, of di with diversity leads or people or diverse stories and, and women as, and their stories and all of that. You hope that that is going to be as well as men and white, white, it's all, it's all going to be mixed in. It just we want a we want a bigger piece of the pie. Women want a bigger piece of the pie, and that way we can all be equally represented. Because I guarantee everybody who's watching or listening to us knows many women and knows many people of color. And so it's like it's that's all entertainment should be reflecting is our actual everyday life and experience and. Uh, at some point, we have to stop making the white character the hero of every franchise, the main hero of every franchise, the white male character most of the time, if not all the time, mm -hmm. the main hero of every franchise. And so as we change, as we transition, we have to be okay as a society to transition and be open to these new things. And too many people are pushing back against it and crying about, oh, you know, you know, the, the SJWs, are burr, 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 burr. all that stuff is just from fear and insecurity and uh, a fear of a loss of power. And that's not going to stop mm -hmm. anything from happening, you know? So and that, I, I agree with you a thousand percent, uh, Alex, and we hope to see it happening more and more. You know? That's, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Who, the old man like me, who wants yeah. to listen to me? Just well, I, yeah, totally. <laughs> listen to you, you know, except like a bazillion people every single day, you know, no big deal. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, I, I have been corrected, you know, Jenna Jones, she's kind of mentioned Ryan Murphy's horror story in True Blood, you know, are definitely have succeeded, Same sure. for, uh, you know, you know, um, those, you know, which really amp up the campiness, which I and ridiculousness, which yeah, I really yeah. appreciate. And also, you can't forget uh, the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Oh, right, my right. Gosh. Which is just about to and wrap that up. Has yeah. definitely succeeded. How, yeah, it's thing is, it's, it's, it's canceled after four seasons, unfortunately. Oh, right. right. but you know they they have succeeded they yeah. have succeeded so you know it's uh you know there's a lot of a lot of misses a few hits yeah and hopefully and hopefully uh ginger snaps the tv show will be a big hit and there also i'm go. hoping a lot more people will go and watch the original you don't need to watch the sequels just watch the first one maybe the second and third yeah one. watch the first second yeah that's a good watch one. the first one Watch yeah, the first you know, like any horror series, it doesn't get great as it goes along. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as we started the show, The Crown is another example of female that's a female led thing. It's about the queen, yes, it's about the royal family, but the queen is the center of that. And there's a, it's a, a woman female lead, so a female lead, rather. So there you go. All right, let's wrap up, Alex, before Christian texts me angry that we bully it into the SEN live time. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you and everything you got going on, real quick. She's paused. <laughs> yeah, you can find me right here on Twitter. That'd be much appreciated if you followed me and checked checked me out there. Um, I I just post a lot of funny gifts and stuff, a lot of reactions to being like just updating you on know, what movies and stuff I'm watching. I try to be fun. Mostly I'm not successful, but I try. That's what matters, guys. <laughs> um, I also am going to be, um, I'd say also next week, I'm going to be having Stacey Howard as my co-host for Schmobait. So I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. And yesterday I had a Schmobait episode with Warfather against Adam Witt. It was so ridiculous, so hilarious. We made serial killer cereals, um, which was like um, was like a Hell Raisin brand. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was one of them, and I, I love that one. And it's ridiculous. It's so bad, but yeah. So and also, I'm just part of the C2A group. And um, part of the C2A group, I'm going to be watching on Cinema Bias. It's my show that I co-host with Video Drew. We dive into movies that really challenge us. I have not seen the movie Children of Men. So I'm excited to dive that on with uh, with Drew on Tuesday. So nice. definitely stay Great. tuned for that. 
Well, there you go. Awesome stuff. Uh, as for me, real quick, just had the Outlaw Nation show with uh, with Kevin Smets jumping on there and John Kaiser. Both those two gentlemen join me on Tuesday. If you haven't watched that show, please give that show a watch. It's barely breaking 2,000 views. Normal, I was expecting three to 4,000. It's Kevin Smets on there for 40 minutes talking about his condition, updating you about what's going on in his world. So please, and John Kaiser with some of the greatest stories you're ever going to hear. Really funny stuff going on there. Don't forget, please watch that. It's a, it's a And then Robert Parker comes on near the end. So it's definitely a done Dungeon reunion on the Outlaw Nation show as well. Of course, sports time uh, happened on Mondays. Don't forget to watch that. Uh, the top 10, new top 10 show is out as well. We're counting down another top 10 list. Matt Nostai, so much fun. And then tomorrow at 4 p.m., Strong Style Live. Don't forget, Strong Style Live, 4 p.m. tomorrow. I don't think there's going to be an Impolite Truths episode tonight. Uh, I think what we're going to do is take the week off, and then Tuesday night we're going to cover the election all night. So those – the, uh, the 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 watch alongs that you've seen with us, we're essentially going to do the same thing. Put it on C-SPAN, and we're all going to watch the elections as they come through. And all of you, come join us Tuesday night. That's going to be a hell of a night. We'll see what happens. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take the night off uh, tonight. So uh, thanks so much. Don't forget the Star Wars shows up as well. The Jedi Way, we put up a new one up, me and, uh, me and uh, uh, Laura Kelly. Uh, talking about the two new Star Wars books and our feelings on that one-minute teaser that was dropped last week during Monday Night Football. That's it. Got to go. Go to SCN Live, 10 a.m. right now. Go over to SCN Live and watch Christian and Harloff and the crew do their thing. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for your Streamlabs and Super Chats. Follow me at The Rope Says. Subscribe and share this video as well. Uh, and please give it a like. The more likes, the more comments. It elevates the visibility of the show and the channel. All right. Much love. That's it. We're out of here. Talk to you soon. Have yourselves a great and positive and fun weekend. Do something great for yourself. All right. Take care. Much love and wear a mask, right, Alex?